Hi, Dr. Yas here. I want to talk about the idea of the use of the MRI as having validity primarily because it is presented as being valid by the overall medical establishment, and that pretty much includes worldwide. And the fact that it's been around and used for over three decades that somehow because of those two things being apparent doesn't necessarily mean that the basis for the use of the MRI is correct or that the use of it is even correct. And I think that it's a, it's a huge technology, obviously. These are huge machines. They're million-dollar machines. They come up with these very fancy pictures. There's this sense that you take the MRI when you're in pain, and it finds a structural variation, and the attempt by the medical establishment is made to correlate the structural variation to your pain. But what, first of all, you want to understand is the idea that the MRI is always performed when you're in pain. And so if a structural variation is found, then of course, it sounds simple to say, well, since it was found when I'm in pain, then it must be causing the pain. But the opposing side to that theory would be that if you're not in pain, that you should not find any structural variations in people, right? So if I'm to say that pain is caused by these structural variations like herniated discs, stenosis, arthritis, meniscal tears, compression fractures, spondylolisthesis, all the things that show up, then the implication is if you're not in pain, then you shouldn't be able to find these structural variations. And in fact, the amazing, remarkable thing is that they are found in people without pain at the very same percentages as those in pain. So, the biggest, most evident study was one that was done fairly recently, and it said that over the age of 60, 90% of people with no back pain can be found to have bulging or degenerative discs. So if bulging or degenerative discs were the cause of symptoms, how could you account for 90% of people without pain having bulging or degenerative discs? And to take it one step further, Let's say that you were one of those people, we just did the study, we just found out you have a bulging or degenerative disc, you have no back pain whatsoever, and then tomorrow you went and you played ball or you bent in an awkward fashion and all of a sudden you're ending up with back pain and we to do, were to do an MRI, now you're in pain, and we find the bulging or degenerative disc, how can the assertion be that the bulging or degenerative disc is the cause of the back pain when we know for sure that you had the very same bulging or degenerative disc without having pain and it was the same level of deterioration? If you start to understand this concept, then you start to see that the pain is independent of the structural variation being found that if an MRI was just arbitrarily done on anybody, not only when they were in pain, you would find out that the same exact structural variations would be found in everybody, whether you're in pain, whether you're not in pain. We could take the same premise and try to say that right-handedness is caused by structural variations. This is just the same exact correlative attempt to be made. So I could find people with right hand who are right-handed and do MRIs of their backs, and I would find a very high percentage of them as having bulging or degenerative discs. Let's say 90% of them. So you would say, wow, 90% of people who are right-handed have bulging or degenerative discs Certainly that sounds like there's a connection between right-handedness and bulging or degenerative discs. But the opposing side to that would have to mean that if you're left-handed, you should not have a bulging or degenerative disc. And if you were to do a study on people who are left-handed, 
you would find that roughly 90% of them have bulging or degenerative discs. Strangely enough, almost the same, if not the same, as those with right-handedness. So what that begins to tell you is that the right or left-handedness is completely independent to the structural variation because as many people who are left-handed as those are right-handed have structural variations like herniated discs or bulging or degenerative discs. The same thing can be said for those in pain. As many people with pain as without pain can be found to have structural variations. It implies it is a completely independent variable. That's what you really want to try to accept about this idea is that every bit, just from a pure theoretical basis, there is literally no value in the MRI when you could find as many structural variations in people without pain as with pain. And if you appreciate you're going there while you're in pain, let's say your pain began two weeks ago and you find a structural variation while you're in pain, what do you think the MRI result would have been if you took the MRI two weeks in a day ago or two weeks in a month or three months or six months? It would have been exactly the same. The same structural variations would have been identified. And so if you can recognize that, then you would start to say then, so what was the point of finding them when I was in pain? If I know that I could have found them when I wasn't in pain, why would finding them when I'm in pain have any greater meaning that that's the cause of my pain? We could look at it from another side, and that is that muscular causes don't show up on MRIs. So let's say you're having a muscle in your back is in spasm, eliciting pain. We get an MRI, it finds a herniated disc or stenosis. What do you think is going to be identified? The herniated disc or stenosis because that muscle in spasm cannot show up. What do you think is going to be treated? The herniated disc or the stenosis because the muscular cause never showed up. And the medical practitioner evaluating you is basically dependent on the results from the MRI. So here's a classic example of where, whether it's the diagnostic test or the education of the medical practitioner, you will be prevented from identifying the appropriate tissue, which is the muscle and spasm, and therefore you'll never get treated for it. And that's really the key reason for chronic pain, misdiagnosed acute pain. You don't really necessarily have to take my word from it. In 2007, the American College of Physicians does a 20-year literature search looking at thousands of cases and establishes that in 85% of cases of lower back pain, the cause of that pain could not be tr uh, associated with a structural variation like a herniated disc or stenosis. In 85% of cases, these are people with back pain, People who had MRIs that showed structural variations through their understanding, they recognized that in 85% of cases, that back pain could not be associated with structural variations that were identified. So the evidence really is, if you look at it from a theoretical basis as to whether it can or can't create or, or create an association between the structural variation and pain from a scientific standpoint, Clearly, the evidence is such that 90% of people with no back pain have structural variations. 85% of people with back pain cannot have that pain associated with structural variations. Muscular causes cannot show up on diagnostic tests. There's just overwhelming evidence that the entire mechanism is completely invalid. So I kind of wanted to step back in history and point out that this wouldn't be the first time that some sense of technology was proven to be completely invalid, even though at the time it was considered to be cutting edge. So we could look back to the early 20th century in the 1900s, and we would have seen that if you had headaches, the answer was to bore holes in your skull. Now, clearly, if you look at today, Anyone would say that's insane, it's no rationale, there's no theoretical basis for it. But back then, that was cutting edge. That's what got done. If you had some sort of personality issue or you seem to have difficulty functioning in life, you got a lobotomy. They cut out a big chunk of your brain. Now, irrational, no theoretical basis back then, 
cutting edge. If you look at the MRI, you'll see it is going to go the way of the lobotomy and boring holes in your head. There is simply no question. There is nothing valid about it. I know that the premise is everybody uses it. Everyone's telling you there's validity. And, you know, between everybody using it and the fact that it's been around for so long, the natural tendency will be to think that it must be valid. But I have treated thousands of people and the answer when they are told that they need a surgery and I say, so did the physician who's recognized the structural variation on the MRI, who is recommending you get surgery, are they saying that you're going to get your surgery and there's a 100% chance this is the cause because it showed up and as a result, it will resolve your pain. 100% chance that's going to happen. For most people, they tell me they're either told there's a 50-50 chance, it's a 30% chance it'll work, a 30% chance it won't work, a 30% chance that it'll stay the same. Others tell me that they're told, oh, it's a 70% chance. But clearly there's no one fully endorsing the correlation, the connection between the structural variation being identified and the symptom that you're experiencing. And in fact, if you want to look at it from a more um, empirical data standpoint, what is the evidence based on the surgeries that have been performed that are related to these structural variations? Well, clearly something hasn't gone right because the medical establishment created the diagnosis of failed back surgery syndrome, which was a diagnosis to account for the fact that they're doing these surgeries and yet the person still has the same, if not greater pain. So, I'm basically a theorist. I'm a guy who's analyzed things and along with all the other evidence that's clear, I really believe that people have to see things for what they are and it is quite simply that there is no value in getting an MRI. The structural variations that are identified have basically nothing to do with your pain and treatment of those structural variations will do nothing to resolve your symptoms. It, it, it's simply the overwhelming evidence, and I realize that it's a very extensive and elaborate technology, but back when, so was boring holes in your head or doing lobotomies. So try to keep in perspective what's happening. Your friends, your family, your co-workers are all suffering after these surgeries. There's no confusion about that, and, and so here's your chance to get a, a better sense, some greater clarity as to why this is occurring, other than I don't know his pain management to try to account for your symptoms when I could no longer identify the cause, which is the path that a lot of people are taking. 22 million Americans addicted to prescription pain medication. So the OS method is different. It simply looks to interpret the body's presentation of symptoms which is really the way the body wants it to be done. It creates a specific symptom to acknowledge that a particular tissue is in distress. That's why you're having your pain or your symptom. And so the interpretation of the body's presentation of symptoms allows the proper tissue to be identified. Muscle is a tissue. It can be identified through the YAS method. It, it, it interprets the symptoms and does physical tests. It has the capacity to identify whether the cause is structural or muscular. And either way, the appropriate Treatment can be provided and your pain can be resolved quickly and effectively. So if you want more information about the YAS method, you can go to my website at www.mitchellyas.com or you can contact me via email at drmitch at mitchellyas.com, D-R-M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L-Y-A-S-S.com or you can call me 516-449-1359, 516-449-1359 in this time of the seasons during the holidays and new year i just wish everybody have the opportunity to get clarity of thought to get an understanding of the path that's needed to resolve your pain get it use it and really just have a great new year go into the new new year knowing that this is the year you won't have to suffer you can get your quality of life back and you can do it through the YAS method. So for now, this is Dr. Mitchell Yas wishing you a pain-free, fully functional life. Bye-bye.